Over 1.9 million years ago, one of our most remarkable ancestors were on the prowl in the plains of Africa. This was Homo ergaster. Fossil evidence suggests the Homo ergaster lived 1.5 to 1.9 million years ago, mainly found in the regions of South and East Africa. The most heavily studied member of the species is Turcanoboy, making him somewhat of a celebrity among evolutionary biologists. Turcanoboy's skeleton was found nearly complete with only his hands and feet missing. Turcanoboy lived about one and a half million years ago. The fossil name refers to the Kenyan Lake Turkana, where it was initially discovered in 1984 by Kemoya Kemu. It's speculated that Turcanoboy had a short, difficult life. He died at only seven to 11 years old. The exact cause of the boy's death is unknown. Some researchers believe the child was disabled due to unusual holes in the fossil vertebrae, perhaps due to a vertebral disease. Another hypothesis for his cause of death is gum disease. The jaw of Turcanoboy shows diseased gums where he lost one of his baby teeth. This would most likely lead to death by blood poisoning. Turcanoboy is a good example of Ergaster's high infant mortality rate, with 40% of fossils recovered of the species being put at less than 14 years of age. Homo ergaster's lifespans were short, seeing as they lived up to 40 years of age. However, there were some individuals that lived to be about 60 years old. Homo ergaster was tall with long legs, a protruding nose on a shorter face, and postcranially robust, and a developed waist. They had large teeth, though smaller than prior species, no chin, a low forehead, and pronounced temporal lines. The small birth canal shows that most of brain development happens postnatally, similar to many homonyms. The Homo ergaster had relatively sophisticated social behaviors. We found evidence of large, multi-male groups where the males would ward off predators and protect the group. It's thought that Homo ergaster was not strictly monogamous, but scientists believe they formed male-female pair bonds. The Homo ergaster was an intelligent homonym. Many stone tools have been found with ergaster fossils, suggesting they had sophisticated object manipulation. In fact, it is also thought that this species had control of fire, as the first pieces of evidence showing the ability to control fire were found around the same time and same area as a speciation of ergaster. Fire allowed them to cook food, which consequently allowed them to consume more calories, catalyzing the evolution of the brain we know today. There are six important fossils of Homo ergaster and several other specimens. Various other skull fossils found shows that their average brain size is about 700 to 850 cubic centimeters with male skulls being much larger than female. A partial skull discovered in 1969 was found with several other fossils of another species and stone tools along with charred bones. Homo ergaster is thought to be the species that created these tools. A fossil found in Illarat, Kenya in the year 2000 has similarities to the Asian Homo erectus, previously unknown. A female pelvis found in Ghana indicates that the offspring are born with a brain 30 to 50% of the size of adult, which is similar to the modern human ratio. The oldest fossilized footprints made by human species from 1.5 million years ago is attributed to Homo ergaster based on shape and size. Wait, hold on. Have you been talking about Homo ergaster this entire time? It sounds an awful lot like Homo erectus. Are you sure you have it right? Well, of course, I mean, this is an informational video about Homo ergaster after all, not Homo erectus, although they are quite similar. But Homo erectus fossils were found in many places around the world, including Eastern and Western Asia, as well as Africa, whereas Homo ergaster fossils were only found in Africa. So considering that, aren't Homo ergaster individuals just some of the earlier African populations of Homo erectus? Many people think that, however it may not necessarily be true. There are several distinct differences in the fossils between both species that show evidence of them being separate. What are those differences? Don't they have very similar anatomy? Well, for starters, Homo ergaster fossils were estimated to have aged several centuries older than Homo erectus fossils. Homo ergaster fossils were found to be at most 1.9 million years old, where H. erectus were found to be at most 1.8 million years old. But 100,000 years does not mean a lot in the name of evolution. Humans have been alive for about 200,000 years, and we have not experienced many more visible physical differences than those observed between ergaster and erectus. While that is a fair argument, there are still notable differences that are not the most obvious to the eye, such as the erectus species having thicker cranium bones, broader nasal bones, and more mandibular development. Their teeth also differ. Their molars are smaller with lower canines, suggesting a different diet and perhaps a different lifestyle than ergaster. I will agree with you on the fact that these differences do exist among both species. However, not one of them was exclusive to either ergaster or erectus. Some fossils of Erectus were found with thinner cranium bones, similar to Ergaster, while Ergaster fossils were found with the same mandibular development as Erectus. Doesn't that mean 
that there is no distinct difference and therefore they are one unified species? May I suggest that they may just be the same species with different traits like us humans today? Some people are taller or shorter, some have different sized appendages. The slight differences between Homo ergaster and Homo erectus seem like they could easily be identified as different traits, don't you think? Not necessarily. Most of the differences identified between fossils directly related to the area they were found in and were found to be consistent for the most part. It is definitely a topic of debate with reasonable arguments on both sides that is not resolved to this day. Agree to disagree? You're right. It's definitely a gray area that requires more fossil evidence and research. Agree to disagree.